cutie foodies it's the one and only sweet pea here and if you're watching this video and you haven't already i'm gonna need you to subscribe like comment and share i don't care if you say first hey what's up feel better because i'm still feeling kind of crappy um just leave me a shout out down below so today we are having our uh, kfc fried chicken wings they are new along with these french fries that they have um I got a 12 piece this is some fruit punch that I really shouldn't be drinking but what the hell they didn't have ginger ale but I do have my tea here unfortunately I didn't make it into a hot toddy but it is what it is so we have all three flavors they come in unsauced um, honey barbecue hopefully you can see that um, this one is hot, I believe. So this is hot. And this is honey barbecue. And the one closest to me is the Nashville hot, which as you can see leaked everywhere. But it is what it is. And then we have some french fries that are cold, but I'm still going to eat. And they refuse to give me sauce for that is what it is. I was use the chicken. So let's start with the Nashville hot. Mm. Not really hot. The hot wings is probably hotter than this, but it is crunchy. Should have added my habanero sauce to this. That's hot. I mean, I'm getting a little bit of pepper in the back, but I, I don't know, maybe. It would have been a little different had all this sauce not spilled out. But, mm, you'll have that. It tastes like a uh, a dry spice rub. And I don't really like that too much. But right, these are okay. Um, let's get a honey barbecue drum mm. it's that crack usually when I go to KFC I always get biscuits and gravy just biscuits and gravy because I love their biscuits I really don't too care for McDonald's biscuits I don't too care for Popeye's biscuits or their chicken um This is why I like saucy stuff. That's not saucy. It's just dry with peppers on it. With their biscuits and gravy. Mm. I'm the type of girl that loves. Like the turkey gravy. And the biscuits. Amazing. Be greedy and get some turkey um, sausage links on the side and some grits. Boom, there's breakfast. So, anyway, continue on the one without 31 days of Halloween. Today, we'll be talking about. Richard Beganwall. I think is how you pronounce his last name. It really doesn't matter to me. He's a damn serial killer. Apparently. He did, however, have a very rough start, which is messed up on all accounts because no child should have to, um, 
endure any traumatic experience, especially when it comes from their parents. Now, his upbringing sort of um, puts me in the mind of that movie. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, but it's called We Need to Talk About Kevin or something like that. Um, in the movie, it was like a very distraught mother. And you would tell she's lost everything. She's being constantly ridiculed and picked on. She looks a mess. She probably smells a mess. Her house is a mess. Graffiti all on the outside from hateful people. Um, I don't remember if she had a job, but if she did, it was sucky. And um, she was just going through all of this shit because her son... Um, when she knew something was wrong with him from the time, you know, that she gave birth to him, she really just couldn't form a bond with him for whatever reason. And then, like, he would treat her differently from the way he treated the dad. So he would be, like, a totally complete pain in the ass while she was home by herself. He refused to go to the bathroom. He refused to talk. He refused to learn. And then when his father came home, he would be so excited and, you know, all of this extraness. And then he did have to go through a little traumatic experience because through her frustration with him one day, um, I believe she, like, broke his arm or either pulled his arm from out of his socket. And that led him to, you know, basically torture her. Um... She busted on him one time, like, jacking off in the bathroom. And instead of him being shocked and, like, ashamed, like any normal teenager would, he looked at her, like, with this sinister look and a smirk on his face and continued to do it. And she kept telling her husband, they did have another child, um, and she just kept telling her husband, like, look, we have to talk about him, we have to do something with him, is something wrong with this boy? And the dad just would not listen. His son was the golden son, it was nothing wrong with him. Well, turns out your son was a fucking psychopath. And he went to the school, shot up all these kids in the school, they lost their lives or were injured, um... And then he also killed his dad and his little sister and then left his mom to take up the brink of all of the hate from the town, which she stayed. I don't think I would have stayed. And then she continued to torture herself because she continued to go and visit him in um, prison, which was kind of weird. But I guess, you know, you love your child, so you want to be there for them no matter what they have done. <coughs> Which is the same way Richard Beganwald's mother felt. Um, I forget her first name. Um, but she felt the same way about her son. She said um, to one of the newspapers when they actually found out everything that he had done. You know, basically that, you know, no matter what, only God knows what he did and the reasons for it. But she said, you know, she would still continue to see him or whatever she said she will always love him that was her son or whatever you know you can't take away a mom's love and that's just is what it is i guess so let me take you back i should have heated these up but they're pretty good he um was abused by his alcoholic father not only was he abused, his mom was abused as well. Oh, that's good. I always put a little bit of honey and some halls in my tea. It helps to clear me up some more. Um, at the age of five, he became a little fucking arsonist. And he set the house on fire. So from the age of five, so about 15 or 16, it was like reform school after reform school, juvenile detention center. He was always in some shit and doing some shit. 
who started drinking at eight, doing drugs at nine. Um, at one point, he tried to set himself on fire in his mother's house. Um, you know, just couldn't get a handle on him. When he was finally released um, from one of the juvenile centers, um, let's say he was about 15 or 16, um, he, um, he graduated from the eighth grade, which is pretty sad at that high of an age. And he enrolled in high school, but he didn't stay long. A few weeks after he enrolled into high school, he left, he ran away from home, um, got in trouble with the law again because he was stealing um, cars and he um, was pulled over and charged um, for taking a car through um, the theft of a vehicle and then taking it through state lines. So once again, he was in custody. When he got out from that, which wasn't a very lengthy sentence, he and a buddy of his went and robbed a convenience store. The buddy was the getaway driver, <coughs> and he was the burglar. He went into there, into the store, told the guy to give him all the money, and he shot him in the chest, ran out of the store, jumped in the car and told his friend that they had to get the hell out of there. Come to find out, the guy that he shot was a prominent um, prosecutor and attorney. And he had just recently purchased that store for his wife a few months before and he was helping her out. So, he was apprehended and arrested, tried and convicted, and received a life sentence. And the interesting thing about all of this is that he only served 17 years of that life sentence. They let him out of prison on good behavior after he murdered somebody in cold blood. No one's at the sink in. He was 18 years old, but he murdered somebody in cold blood. And they let him out after 17 years. So, when he got out from that, after the 17 years, he called himself going straight, or as straight as he could. He got a little shit in the wall job found a girl um he got married it never said um any of the articles i read never said if he had children or not so i can't speak on that but um he did get married so he was with somebody for a time how long they were together it really doesn't say but um, her father hated him and did not want them um, to get married. He did not want his daughter with that, um, that dude whatsoever. But she married him anyway. Then, after being straight, but for so many years, a good buddy of his from prison got out. And all hell broke loose. And this is why the newspapers in New Jersey dub him the Jersey Shore Thrill Killer. He just killed people for the hell of it. He gave no fucks about anything or anyone. It wasn't like he was out to get anything from it. He just wanted to murder people. Because he felt like it. Which is very scary. Um, his first victim was a young lady, um, on her way home. Her name is Anna from, um, she's, 
she was going to um, Brick Township, I believe. Um, she had just, you know, she was walking on a highway or whatever. And what really pisses me off about this situation is that a police officer, or state trooper, whoever the hell, but it was law enforcement, saw her walk, excuse me, walking along this road in the dark by herself. Um, and he didn't stop. He didn't ask her if she was okay or anything. He said he was on a call and he wanted to make his call and then, you know, come back afterwards um, and then give her a ride home, which I think he probably should have just picked her up and, um, you know, went on about their business, especially if the call wasn't like anything detrimental, you know, like shots fired or anything like that. But he kept going and when he doubled back around 10 minutes later, she was gone without a trace. Um, then we start finding bodies just popping up everywhere he left one young lady behind a damn burger king several people they dug up from um his mother's backyard some articles say basement others say backyard either way he was on some John Wayne Gacy shit and was um had bodies on top of bodies at his mom's house he also killed another um inmate he was a drug dealer and he escaped from prison and i guess he thought beagle wall was his friend he murdered his ass too well all in all he killed about six people um, they say it's probably more, but he was only convicted of six. Which brings us to the murder of October 31st in 1983 when Maria Kyle was on her way home. Actually, shit, I got the two mixed up. This was, this was Maria, not Anna was on her way home or they both probably were because I think one left from a bar either way my mind is all warped but you get the gist we're talking about Halloween murders and I know for a fact he murdered Maria Calilea on October 31st she was 17 as was Anna and a few women were maybe like 18 and 20 and he took their lives just because he fucking felt like it. Which poses the question, and leave your thoughts in the comments below. Is our justice system really just? They have some children that, you know, <clears throat> kill one person or whatever, and they put them away for life. They try them as adults. They put them away, throw away the key. You're in the system for the rest of your life. We don't want to hear anything else from you. You're an inmate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's it. And we have this dude who did the same thing, but he was 18, which in New Jersey is technically an adult, well, the United States rather. So why the hell after 17 years did they release him? Good behavior, my ass. You burglarize a place and you murdered somebody in cold blood. What did you what did he think was gonna happen if he shot the dude in the chest? He was just gonna be okay? <laughs> no. So what do you think of our judicial system? Because I think it really needs some work. These are fucking nasty. I just can't. Um, like I said, maybe if the sauce was still on it, I could do it, but it just tastes like oil and spices, and it doesn't even taste like it's mixed together well, and it's making me nauseous. So we just want to talk. These are bomb, though. So if you guys want to get the, um, honey barbecue, check that out. The hot wings are good, too, and probably try them plain. It doesn't really taste like anything. Um, 
So that's my review on that. But he was ultimately um, apprehended. If you guys hear any humming or banging, the humming is my mom. The banging is my sister. She's in the kitchen cooking. I, I just don't know. Maybe I need to put out a production sign and be like, filming. Anyway, um, he was um, apprehended because um, his friend actually turned state's evidence against him because he killed his fucking cat. Really? So he took them to all of the bodies um, at his mom's house, at the remote locations, um, anybody's that they didn't find, he took them to. Because um, like I said, one of the young ladies was found behind a Burger King of all fucking places. Um, he was ultimately tried and convicted. Oh, and for these murders, he was sentenced to death. But again, here goes good old Uncle Sam and saying, you know what? Nah, we're not going to kill you. We're going to commute your sentence to life. And that's exactly what they did. His friend, um, because he basically snitched on his ass, got, um, I think it was like between five and eight years. So he's out. I don't know if he's still living. But I know Richard Beganwald, um died in prison in um, 2008. So he's no longer living. Um, so it just is what it is. I know his mom probably died a horrible death because um after a while she did leave her husband um but she just couldn't get a handle on her son and um i well i can't say i know you know from personal experience but from you know seeing others go through different things it's very difficult sometimes as a parent to see your child going down you know um the wrong path and especially if you feel like there you've done all that you can do and then there's nothing else left for you to be able to do to help them when they don't really want to help themselves so i know um that was probably really painful for her to see her son living out the rest of his days in prison and obviously she wasn't going to be around much longer um to see him through it so it is what it is that's how the cookie crumbles and you know it just kind of pisses me off because the story that we talked about yesterday where the young man um it was kind of a toss-up of whether or not he actually committed the crime that he said he did. Well, they said that he did, and they still executed him. But this man, that's a serial killer, he's been in trouble since he was freaking five years old, setting the house on fire, setting himself on fire, <coughs> setting himself on fire, stealing cars, robbing convenience stores, murder. Like, within the span of three years from him getting out of his first juvenile detention center or reform school, whatever you want to call it, he committed murder. So why the hell would they think that it would be okay to just say, oh, he was on his best behavior, so let's just let him out after 17 years. He's not going to murder anybody else. And he turned out to be a fucking serial killer. Really, Jersey? I don't know, guys. If you have any topic or food suggestions, send it to itsweetpea87 at gmail.com. That's I-T-S-S-W-E-E-T-P-8-7 at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at I-T-S underscore S-W-E-E-T-P and that's itsweetpea. Also, don't forget to follow my other channel or subscribe to that one. You'll see the bubble around here somewhere. It's soap with a jar of tea. Um, check out my last video. Like I said, leave me a comment down below. Please share, share, share this video. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. I will catch you guys again next time. I'm going to make me a damn hot toddy. I'm throwing this shit in the garbage. <laughs> and I'm going to rest. Um, like I said, the honey barbecue is lit. The hot wings are okay. And this Nashville hot is just fucking disgusting. So at your own risk the fries are good when they're hot they're cold now i'm not even going through all of that i hope i feel better soon because i'm tired of sounding like kermit but it is what it is i love you guys thank you for watching liking subscribing commenting and sharing 
you guys are the best don't forget to follow me or send in your and send in your food and topic suggestions and i'll catch you guys in the next one